Hey everyone, my name's Josh and this is Schneis 15. This is my carnage from our Ford Edge that we have. I thought I'd make a little video on how all-wheel drive systems work in Ford vehicles because I had a lot of problems finding a video on somebody explaining the system. So I want to go through it quickly and just do a very, very brief job on how the system works in layman's terms, what to look for for diagnosis, and overall, just how the system works. So I've dri dr drawn up a little diagram of how the system works. And we're gonna go through it really quick, show you the mechanics and you know how it activates in layman's terms and what the common failures are. And just show you in my case, what the failure was. So this is our system. We got our transmission in the front. We got a PTU, which in layman's terms is a transfer case. They call it a PTU, I believe, because it's not just transferring motion from one direction to the other. It's going uh, in this way and then out this way. So the power comes in from the side and then it transfers it towards the rear of the vehicle. It's like a little differential almost, but I'm trying to figure out what the actual name of that is. I, you know, it's still rotary motion, but it's changing the direction of it. So anyways, your drive shaft and your PTU, they always spin in the system, always spin. It goes back to this thing here, which is your clutch pack. It's your drive shaft attaches to this. And, and when this clutch pack is, elect, is activated, it's activated by an electromagnet. The electromagnet puts power to this clutch pack makes the clutches grab and that in turn puts power to your rear wheels so there's two different times that your car is going to do this you got four wheel speed sensors like i said guys i'm just doing this in layman's terms for everybody just to do an average diagnosis when your car senses your front wheels are spinning and your rears aren't it knows that there's slippage so it's going to apply power to this electromagnet to this clutch pack and it's going to make power go to your rear wheels and it's gonna get you going. That's how the all wheel drive system works. It also will apply power under a very, very hard acceleration. You're gonna see it applying power to the rear. You can actually look in the intelligent all wheel drive on your screen. You can watch that and it'll actually show you how much power is being applied to the rear diff. It does this to avoid torque steer and torque steer is caused by your front wheels being driven at a really, really, high torque under a hard acceleration it causes the front wheels to want to pull to each side just because they're being driven this problem never showed up on old trucks and stuff that were rear wheel drive because you're being pushed down the road there was no interference with your system through your steering system so ford puts power to the rear diff and makes it a little bit rear wheel drive to help you go down the road without torque steer which is very nice anyways that's how the system works basically, and that's don't that's when it's activated. Uh, problems with these systems are the PTU. The PTU is up front, which is a transfer case. I'll put a picture up on the screen here while I'm talking. And the PTU has a very small amount of fluid in it. It's prone to failure because of heat. We don't see that many problems here in Canada. That's what my buddy says. That's a mechanic that works on them all the time. Because I believe what happens is that it's a colder climate and the state sees a lot more failures because it's so hot, they see units just cook themselves because there's only like half a quart of oil in there or something. It's not much at all. The oil gets contam contaminated really quickly because it's, you know, such a small quantity of oil that gets thrown through all your bearings and stuff and the units fail. Uh, lots of people suck them out. You can take a sucker, of course, Ford makes them non-serviceable that there's no drain plug, just like this rear differential unit. So you have to use a fluid evacuator and go down in with a tube and suck out as much as you can get, put oil in and try and change that. There's a guy on there, uh, Ford Tech, make you loco. He's awesome guys, great guy. He's uh, in, you're, where is he? He's somewhere in Michigan, I believe. And anyways, great videos. I won't get too much into it. He knows Ford, so he's a great Ford guy watch his videos if you want to learn more about that but basically he recommends every 30,000 miles 50,000 K that you replace your oil in there and change it to avoid the common PTU failure um, anyways 
the power goes through your PTU, back to your diff, and this clutch activates your rear diff then. These, what I had found in my case, is there's a male spline right here and a female spline right here. Like I said, your differential or your drive shaft always turns and it spins this coupler here. It's always spinning. It's just what comes out of it is controlled by your computer and all the jazz that goes on in there. We're not going to get into it. Like I said, very basic, you know, going through what happens, these splines stripped in here. So, and the male splines on here were not good. So I had to replace my whole diff. If you get lucky, there is a part number you can buy that is just this coupler and you can get a new female spline in this assembly. It's about 800 bucks, I want to say, and you can hopefully just fix this. But in my case, it stripped the male splines here so bad that it, it, I didn't think it had enough to grab to, so I had to replace the whole diff. So anyways, that's a common failure. Or if you're getting codes, there can be clutch pack failures and stuff. In my case, there was no codes at all. It was applying the system, but the back wheels weren't spinning. They just would not spin. So what happened? The electromagnet was activating this clutch pack and this shaft in here would start spinning. But since the splines were stripped, it's spinning on the splines and the diff ain't doing anything. After that, it goes into your rear diff for your RDU, which again is a non-serviceable item from Ford, which has, you know, <laughs> just a regular, you know, pinion gear, crown, everything like a regular truck differential that has for the past hundred years. You know, except they would have axles coming out here with modern cars. We're using CV shafts now in these systems. So these differentials can get ripped out. You probably get a good, you know, diagnosis by pulling your diff plug. There is a diff plug. You can go in there. It's full of mo metal. Well, I'll leave you to diagnose them out further yourself. But commonly the, the failures on these are going to be the actual clutch pack up here. The PTU and the actual diff can fail itself in my case like i said they're just the splines stripped and i did find some videos on guys just replacing this front coupler ford don't want you to the dealer don't want you to but there is a part number i'll try and find that you can put in that will fit in all these models and ford i found it in an old service bulletin or something that ford actually did make it so obviously they had issues that you know you could just replace the front of the diff, replace that clutch pack, but Ford wants you to replace the whole thing, of course, because they make a lot of money off of these units. I paid about $3,000 for this unit. Was it worth it? I don't know. New cars are expensive. We really like this car. It's in really good shape mechanically and body-wise, and everything drives good. No clunks, no bangs. You know, I've really stayed on top of stuff with the car taking care of it it was taken care of by the previous owners which were friends of ours that bought it brand new taken care of by the ford dealer so everything was you know taken care of well if i had to drive this thing for another two hundred fifty thousand k i think what i would do is pull this diff unit apart the new one and put some grease in there because i'm thinking that they you know it's stripped out because of lack of lubrication and it would help put some spline grease on there but I don't feel it'll go another 250,000 K. I know it won't. And I don't think I'm going to have to worry about this issue again. And hopefully Ford has updated the part and updated this, that maybe they fixed the issue. But anyways, quick and dirty way of how the Ford all wheel drive system works. This covers the, you know, the Explorer, the Fusion, the Flex, the, what else do they call them? Escape, the, Taurus, like the cop cars, they they got that all-wheel drive system in them. It's very, you know, some stuff is a little bit different, but it's very close to the same principle of a system. But anyways, that's how it works. Power comes through your transfer case. Your drive shaft always spins. So if you're looking at diagnosing this system and your drive shaft's not spinning, you got to go up to your PTU. Probably be a really bad failure if it wasn't spinning, and you'd really know something was wrong. But a lot of times these PTOs. PTUs make a lot of noise and not good sounds, and it's pretty easy to diagnose. If you're getting power through your drive shaft, no funky sounds, either your clutch pack has failed, uh, the splines have stripped like, it, like I found here in this video, or your rear differential has failed. What you can do is make sure you're getting power to your connector here if you have the vehicle off the ground and get all four wheels off. If you have a lift, especially is handy. You can check for power, see if the system's applying power. You can watch your intelligent all-wheel drive on the 
on the screen, you'll see how much power is being applied. And under normal acceleration, you're just gonna see power applied to your front wheels. But if you have somebody, you gotta be careful doing this, I don't recommend it. If you have somebody put their foot on the brakes of the car and put their foot on the drive of the car, on the gas pedal, you're gonna see power start applying to the rear. So if you do that, simultaneously go underneath the back of the car, put your meter on the two power wires going into this magnet, see if the car is sending power there. If it is, it's a good chance that your full all-wheel drive system is working fine. It's just a mechanical failure like mine. Mine was getting power, but these splines were stripped. Power wasn't being transferred to the rear diff. And as far as diagnosing the rear diff, well, pretty well got to pull the cover and see if there's any carnage in there. I'm pretty sure you'd hear some pretty bad noises if something was bad in there. So, anyways, that's just a quick and dirty go-through of how the Ford all-wheel drive system works in layman's terms. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, stay tuned. Hopefully, we won't have any more Edge videos because I want it to be a good, reliable car. But if there is any issues with the car, I'll make a video and put it on the channel. Thanks for watching.